What an incredible picture. A lot of water then and a lot of mud left behind. Hello, I'm John Shumway, and this, of course, is probably Pittsburgh's most recognized landmark, the tip of the Golden Triangle Point State Park, where the Allegheny and the Monongahela come together to form the mighty Ohio River. Anyone who grew up around here or knows anything about the Pittsburgh area knows that this is probably the most celebrated point of the city. We feature it on our calendars and posters, and of course, whenever there's a nationally televised sporting event, it's highlighted. But this place is so much more than a landmark. It's a place where we like to bring our families. We come here by the thousands every summer and fill this park for concerts and celebrations, to watch the fireworks, or maybe just to sit by the fountain and watch the rivers flow by. So you can imagine everyone's dismay when this park disappeared under floodwaters the weekend of January the 20th, 1996. In fact, the water was so deep that where I'm standing now, the water would have been several feet above my head. But the flooding wasn't confined to just downtown Pittsburgh. People all along the three rivers, as well as the creeks and streams that feed into them, were affected by the flooding that weekend, the worst they had seen in a quarter of a century. And they lost a lot. But they didn't lose their spirit and this video is dedicated to them. It's also meant as a remembrance for all of us of the flood of 96. You'd probably expect the first images in a flood video to be of water, but it was snow that led to the flood of 96. In early January, it came in blizzard proportions. It's slippery out here. With storms dumping several feet in some parts across the eastern states. I wish I'd never see it again. <laughs> Maybe I won't, because I'm 78 years old and this is pretty tough. Schools and businesses shut down, and traffic of all kinds either stopped or was at a virtual standstill. Beyond frustration, just about ready to give up and sleep in the airport tonight. <laughs> Hey, Dave, uh, we're going to go on 279, okay there, buddy? In all my years of snow removal, the best snow fighter is a good old son. Turns out there was a quick thaw. And then a steady rain. The rain and rock slides it brought seemed like a problem at the time. But because of a freeze-thaw seesaw, something more formidable than landslides was taking shape on the backwaters, the creeks, and the rivers far from the city of Pittsburgh. Lock operators were among the first to sound the alarm, especially since the Monongahela River looked like a frozen pond after someone took a sledgehammer to it. Is this considered a pretty big ice flow here? Uh, yes, sir. I would classify it as a pretty big ice flow. We have ice approximately about 12 miles up the river. Still, the mighty Mon worked her way towards Pittsburgh, snaking through a narrow passage in the ice. about the flooding possibility uh, when something like this happens? Uh, well, with warm weather and uh, we're starting to run a little bit more water right now, there's always that possibility. You know, the bad thing about the ice now, it's getting up on end. It's packing in solids yeah, here. Yeah. In the other direction, the ice chunks may have been smaller but the worries were just as big for people living along French Creek. This is the main course of the creek, which is plugged solid. It's going down through, there's like an opening. That is now the creek has changed its, uh, its course. I'm worried um, because the firemen say they don't know which way it's gonna go when it breaks loose. Right there's our fire pit. We have uh, barbecues and stuff at it, it's underwater. Indeed, the first people hit hard were those living along creeks when the water came up fast early Friday morning. You see what we have now, <laughs> a real mess. If you've driven along Route 30 in Westmoreland County, you've probably been tempted to stop and admire the picturesque Loyal Hunter Creek. Well, this day, drivers were stopping for sure, but not by choice. You can't get in the living area bar with 30, but you feel water. 
you, you want to turn around and go back on 30, okay? Don't, don't try and breathe any water that's too deep, though. If it gets too deep, don't go through it, okay? Shut down. Probably a good idea to get all this stuff down, right? Yes. When did it start getting bad? Well, we left for school this morning. We're teachers in Somerset County. And uh, when we left for school at about 6.30, quarter to 7, we were barely able to get out. It was coming over the bridge both directions. Figured it's a good idea to get the provisions now because this supermarket, you don't know how long it'll be over. Right, and it's the only one in town, so we got to get our groceries and get home and see what happens. flooded out. We have no heat. Uh, we have no water because the pipes are going to freeze. We had to shut the water off. Uh, our hot water tank's gone. Uh, we have no place to stay. How can you afford to buy everything over again? We're just getting started and we don't have any insurance, so, you know, it's hard when you're just starting out. Most of those outlying creeks and streams pour into the Allegheny or Monongahela rivers. And you don't even have to live around here to know where those two rivers end up. Friday afternoon, the Allegheny Wharf, one of two down-by-the-river parking lots inexpensive and popular with workers in downtown Pittsburgh. What most people didn't know when they parked there Friday morning, the Allegheny River was rising fast. Some heard it through the grapevine and got their cars out in time. But all of a sudden, it wasn't safe to drive out yourself. Before long, even a tow truck couldn't help. Somebody called and said, Bernie, are you parked down there? And I thought you were running. I was foolish. I went for the cheap parking today. Yeah. I parked in the garage all week. I think well, I'm angry because at 9 o'clock this morning, we were told by the predictors uh, that it was going to be a crest of 22 feet which is below flood stage, and so we didn't think we were going to have a problem, and now we're 31. As Friday wore on, both the Allegheny and the Mon began to close in on the Golden Triangle. started across the bridge, uh, I saw the water coming up pretty quick and I ran across the bridge and I said, well, maybe I can get it. And I went down towards the river and got up to my pant leg and said, I just can't do it. So as a precautionary measure, we have the whole museum staff working all night along with volunteers uh, from the museum associates and we are elevating everything inside of the building. We're above 28 already. Yeah. During the last big flood, the water is at the top of this railing. So we're talking another couple of feet, and it will be the inside the building. At your door. Right. It's not inside it. Yeah. Right. People in downtown Pittsburgh weren't the only ones fighting against time that Friday night. There was trouble on the Yakagini River, too. We're telling the residents of Quanzel to stay off the streets unless there's an extreme emergency. We're going to have the police out, patrolling. We're going to use National Guard. Wait, wait.
It actually looked like a tide coming in but not receding, as a tide would do. It just kept rolling in, like bubbling towards the residents. And as if the flooding wasn't enough, Mother Nature played another cruel trick that evening. Well, it's supposed to go down to about five degrees tonight. People forced from their homes needed a warm place to go. So emergency shelters everywhere open their doors. They bring nothing out because they come knocking on the door and telling us to leave right away because the water was rising so fast. You were talking to someone there, uh, showing him how the uh, how the net works and how we handle emergencies here in the Colville area. SW3SKM Net Control. Okay, I'm talking here to the Katie Gay for Channel 2 photographer. They're going to stay here at the center until 10 o'clock tonight, and uh, we're going to leave and be back tomorrow if they need us. It would be a long night, and for many people, things would only look worse in the morning. Saturday morning, January 20th, the water came up quickly overnight. This video taken from a helicopter shows the Golden Triangle, or what was left of it. In case you don't know, that's the Monongahela River over on the right and the ice-choked Allegheny River on the left. The fountain at the very point of the triangle, completely underwater. The Point Park stage over on the left, flooded. So is the Fort Pitt Museum on the right. And the waters backed up all the way through Point State Park to Commonwealth Place, the road running directly in front of the Hilton Hotel at the rear center of your screen. This is a special report, live from Eyewitness News. And we bid you a good morning from the Eyewitness Newsroom, five minutes before 8 o'clock. Except for those directly affected, most people didn't know how bad things were until they turned on the news Saturday morning. And as the waters rose, just about everyone on the Eyewitness News team was called in to help cover the disaster. We'll just run you through it, starting with the north side. Well, everyone, we understand, has been evacuated at this point. There were about 100 people. Our KDK TV reporters, photographers, and technicians traveled throughout western Pennsylvania and to parts of West Virginia, keeping an eye on the rising waters. Below this ramp is Glenfield Borough. And from where I'm standing, you can't tell where these backyards end and the Ohio River begins. Feeding back information. The declaration of a disaster is paramount to getting these bills paid here, and it sounds pretty optimistic. The question is, will they declare the whole state a disaster area? Some of the most memorable scenes out of western Pennsylvania came from along the shoreline of the Allegheny River near downtown Pittsburgh. The cars that were abandoned the day before on the Allegheny Wharf were now long gone or barely visible. Underwater or under huge chunks of ice. Pleasure boats once docked upstream on the Allegheny now crammed under bridges in the Golden Triangle. boat happens to be a, uh, uh, a special one. And if there was a tourist attraction during the flood of 96, well, this was it. The Wind Symphony Barge that normally cruises the world, Pittsburgh's musical ambassador. It's uh, one, the only one of its kind in the world. But the flood of 96 threatened to end that claim to fame by beaching the point counterpoint at her dockside. She had been lifted up by the water, moved over, and set down on the concrete wharf smashing anything that got in the way. But that's not all. She was perched precariously at the wharf's edge. Probably worth a couple million dollars, uh, and uh, it's important to the city and the, its heritage, and we're trying to save it here. The big concern, efforts to refloat the barge could have her slide into the river and sink. It's gonna fall! But the dangerous state of the Wind Symphony barge didn't stop this man. A spectator caught his act on home video. The daredevil, a relative of the symphony's founder, and he's trying to shimmy across a tow line above the fast-moving Allegheny River. The mission to get on board, which he did, and to steer the barge off of its icy perch, which he didn't. 
That would take days and another tactic, one that you'll see a bit later. Why would you do that? A few blocks away, the 7th Street Bridge. This pleasure boat had broken loose upstream. The owner tracked it down after seeing his boat on the morning news. He showed up to salvage what he could. Your boat, obviously. Huh? What, uh, tell me what, we, what we're looking at here. Uh, you're looking about $100,000 down the drain. <laughs> yeah, it's about a happy day. Across the river, others were on a mission, too, as water crept into Three Rivers Stadium. Workers had to keep the team's uniforms and equipment dry, and that meant getting it out. After all, the Steelers were just days away from a date with Dallas at Super Bowl 30 in Tempe, Arizona. We're in the Benenham right now, and we have water in our basement at the Benenham. We have it under the stage, in the backstage areas, in some of our work areas. You didn't have to be on the shoreline to take on water. Basements filled up fast in downtown businesses, some even a few blocks away from the river, like the Benenham Center. We have a fabulous crew that's been at work since uh, the middle of the night. Uh, they're still at work, they're doing a great job, uh, and we expect to be able to go on with the show this evening. You have laying water now? 911 Emergency Headquarters in Pittsburgh. As Saturday wore on, dispatchers did their best to handle hundreds of calls. Well, I'm sure if they can't go across one bridge, they would just detour and take another one. Meantime, Mayor Tom Murphy used the 911 center to give status reports on conditions in Pittsburgh while people at home and work watched for any updates on television. Hines Hall uh, are flooded. The full, all, many buildings downtown, their basements are flooded now. Uh, the steam system downtown was uh, partially flooded. We had to pump frantically to keep it from completely shutting down. Even news people had to keep pace with the fast rising water. KDK's basement sprung a few leaks too. So did our underground garage. And those of us who weren't bringing you news about the flood were cleaning up because of it. KDKA was among the many downtown companies affected, all right along Fort Duquesne Boulevard next to the Allegheny. Sandbags helped. So did the fact that we sit up high on the riverbank, unlike the other side of the Allegheny. For some people on the north side, it was a different story. Well, I watched it all night coming up, you know, but I didn't think we would have to leave, you know. But they did. A senior citizen apartment building evacuated after it started filling with water. And by mid-morning on Saturday, the damage on the North Shore and up the lower Allegheny River near Pittsburgh was all too evident. Further up the Allegheny, just above Oakmont, a group of barges broke loose and rolled over a dam. Seven of them missed hitting a marina in Oakmont, and then... The eighth one took us out, hit it broadside, and just wiped it out. There are four of us that live, five of us live year-round. That's a home, but it's gone. For those who rushed to the marina, the first task at hand was consoling family and friends and then the long, hard job of starting over. Just go through. Back out of here and just get this loose so we can loosen it when the water goes down. Yeah. Just above the Holton Bridge, still in the Oakmont area, lies 12 Mile Island. It's a middle of the river refuge for some people, only now their homes were flooded. runaway barge was left high and dry on the tip of the island. The lower end of the town is still underwater and the problem we have now is that it's frozen over. In Freeport, Armstrong County, still further up the Allegheny.
high-rise we did evacuate last evening. The senior citizens who lived there had to spend the night in a church before going home Saturday afternoon. Feeling all right? Oh, yeah. Kind of an exciting night, I guess. Yeah, I don't want another one. Back at Three Rivers Stadium, local, state, and national leaders had just gotten back from a helicopter tour. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Ridge and United States Senator Arlen Specter among them. It's a devastating sight. I mean, you know, a couple weeks ago I was down here to watch uh, uh, the Steelers clinch the championship and uh, we walked back through the point. You can't find the point now. I want to update the river situation while it has crested here at the point. Uh, and things are going down on the Allegheny upriver as well as the Monongahela River. Uh, the situation has not resolved itself. Moving up the Mon River now from the point. That's the Parkway East, I-376 outbound from the city. Near the top of your screen, what looks like a canal full of groundwater, that's the inbound lanes of the parkway. The parking lots below the highway also underwater. You can see on the map, the Monongahela River actually flows north towards Pittsburgh. We're now traveling from Pittsburgh towards the bottom of the map, actually upstream, stopping at communities along the Mon, like West Homestead. You're now looking down on Sandcastle, the popular water theme park. In the summertime, those water slides will splice you down into crystal blue pools. But for now, the slides bottom out in the muddy brown Monongahela River. McKeesport, where the Yakagani pours into the Mon. This is Harrison Village, home to about 300 people. Those who didn't get out in time ended up on an island. Their only escape by boat. I didn't think it was going to get this high, so we just stayed in there. Just to see what it's all about. It's been a long time. I remember when I was a kid from the last time in 72. So we came out like everybody else and see what it is. Hey, Randy, on the other side of the pool, up four, up four. <laughs> like a skating ring. Really bad. That's how it looked in another part of McKeesport, Walnut Street. First, it flooded. It just came all at one time. And then it froze, forcing some business owners to shut down. As for people who didn't move their cars in time, well, they wouldn't be driving anywhere anytime soon, at least not until everything thawed out. No doubt years from now, some kids in McKeesport will remember the day the streets turned to ice. Others will remember a temporary shelter at the high school gym, somewhere to pass the time with their parents on that bitter cold day when the flood came. What do you guys think of being evacuated from your homes? How is this? You having fun? No. No? Yeah. No. Oh, it was terrible, I'll tell you that now. Um, they woke us up about 4 o'clock in the morning, and <laughs> everything was just going wrong. All the people could do was wait for the all clear, and catch a precious few hours of sleep until it was safe to go home. Continuing south now along the Mon, along the riverbank in the Glassport area. The damage to businesses visible from the air. At the southern tip of Allegheny County, Elizabeth on one side of the Monongahela River, West Elizabeth on the other side, two low-lying communities, neighborhoods that once bordered the river, now part of it. mom and grandmother live here. A few towns away, upriver in Washington County. And they've been here all their lives and they just don't want to move. Monongahela, the city named for the river. The water was already receding along Route 88. That's Main Street to the locals in Mon City. 
and it runs right through the heart of town. The people in these basement apartments wouldn't be going home anytime soon. And it wasn't just the Mon River causing trouble in Monongahela. Pigeon Creek overflowed its banks, too. This is Cox's Grocery Store, a landmark on the outskirts of town. Nearby homeowners also had their work cut out for them. Community leaders, back from a tour of the Mon Valley. What's the hardest hit spots of, uh, of Washington County? Uh, Monongahela, Charleroi, Roscoe, um, California. West Brownsville. West Brownsville was devastated with this. As you can see from these images from other towns along the Mon. The situation has not resolved itself at all as we head on to the west on the Ohio. John Burdett's in the Weather Center. Back in Pittsburgh, forecasters were now focusing their attention downstream. The Ohio River, formed by the Mon and the Allegheny, had not yet crested at some locations. As we head west from the point, you'll see how the Ohio left its mark that Saturday. Neville Island, just downstream from Three River Stadium. Awful. And Glenfield Borough, a tightly knit neighborhood now up to its floorboards in the Ohio. These are our friends in such a small town. Everybody knows everybody. And it's like, no matter how bad it is for you, it's worse for somebody else down the street. Or for someone else down the river as we continue away from Pittsburgh on the Ohio. Flooded. The mill's flooded. We had an explosion. Our F2 furnace uh, exploded. That's what happened when floodwaters met molten metal at the Hussey Copper plant in Leedsdale. Everyone hustled to keep the water away from other furnaces. The water's rising fast and stuff on it, and as soon as it hits that, we may have another explosion here, so we're getting back out of the way right now. But it wasn't the explosion and fire that caused injuries. It was the icy water, frigid and downright dangerous when it filled up the firefighters' boots. This bird's eye view of the Ohio will show you the power of runaway barges. A lock and dam can only stop so many. You can imagine what it took to clear the wreckage. A few miles downriver in Freedom Beaver County. Last time flooding was this bad, 1972. Hurricane Agnes. Only this time, the water rose faster and with less warning. Mary Ferenza lived through Agnes, not to mention the flood of 1936. I can't take it anymore now. I'm 76 years old. I can't take it anymore. And if it wasn't for the family help and the friends, everybody in Freedom is so friendly, you just hate to move out of Freedom. And still there were more rescues and more homes surrounded by water. This is Bridgewater, Beaver County. The signs of trouble were the same here and in many other towns along the river as the Ohio surged on across the Pennsylvania border and into West Virginia. It's just been a devastation. Uh, this is the second worst flood we've had in the history of the town. In New Cumberland, West Virginia, help arrived even before the water went down, like this load of supplies from Weirton Steel. 
We just appreciate all the help that we're getting. Volunteers, people just calling and saying, what do I do to help? And uh, it's a terrific effort. We've got approximately 53 businesses that are uh, uh, a lot of damage, severe damage in some of those. We have 225 households, two churches, two schools. In Wellsburg, Wheeling, Moundsville, New Martinsville, and all of the communities in between, people there had a bit more warning because of what had already happened upstream in Pittsburgh. But that didn't make the losses any easier to take. By Sunday, the worst was over. The flood had moved on, down the Ohio and toward the Mississippi. And as the water went down on Wheeling Island, it left behind sad mementos, like someone's rocking chair floating in the middle of the street. Check on the sword, make sure it's not clogged. It's okay. It also left muddy water everywhere. and unforgettable scenes of famous places, like Wheeling Downs racetrack still underwater, and not so famous places like Nancy Gibson's cellar, which was finally drying out. About five feet in the basement. Boy, is this, uh, is this one of the worst you've seen since you No, here? I've been here, I was lived in the 36th flood. I'm an old timer, I've been in all the floods, so I know what's going on. It's a mess, but we'll, we'll clean up and we'll stay here. We love the island and we live on the river and watch all the boats go up and down all the time, and it's really nice. You see devastation, you see hardship, and then you see great neighbors and great friends really pitching in. Governor Gaston Caperton, just back from a tour of the Wheeling area. So you'll get a chance to find out what's happening up, up in the Weirton area, all the way up north. We'll fly over and see it. And on his way with other community leaders to see more, more of what the flood had done to the people of West Virginia. Back in Pittsburgh, another helicopter touches down. This one sent by President Bill Clinton. The president has asked us to cut the red tape, to respond quickly to the people of Pennsylvania. We have seen a lot today. We saw people who were hurting. We saw bridges that were destroyed highways that were affected, homes and businesses that were affected. The head of FEMA was here too. That's the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Part of their job to help people recover their losses. Just getting numbers right now. The only way to get a good estimate was to see the damage up close. And that meant door to door, from one neighborhood to another. Yeah, I could, from the looks of it, he, he must have more than three feet at this point. Well, how much more do you have here, <laughs> <laughs> Two feet. Two feet of water. Two feet. Uh, and we've taken, like, the dishes all out. People who worked by the rivers and creeks were busy day and night. Funny thing, though, the complaints were few, and nobody seemed to mind giving up a few moments for a stranger. My name is Connie Gordon the Tribune. Hi, I'm Sandy Jones. Be it a country shop in Ligonier or a big business, like that copper plant outside Pittsburgh, all told, the damage would run into the millions. We're getting rid of the mud first, uh, then so we can see what our damage is on the floor. And then from there, we're going to start taking the floor up and, and uh, you know, little by little. We had to throw most of our equipment away. 
In Bridgewater, beer was flowing at Boots Texas Roadhouse, but of course no one at the restaurant was celebrating. They were trying to get back their livelihoods and remembering the last time it happened. Well, I was 10 years old when uh, uh, Flood Agnes came, and it's pretty much the same, he says. The same damage, same, uh, the walls, the insulation in the walls have, uh, are soaked, the windows are broken, uh, the floor is buckling, so it's the same, same elements. All kind of mess. Mess city. In spring, I'm moving it on. I've been through three, that's enough. Remember those pictures from West Elizabeth along the Mon River? Well, when the water finally went down, it turns out people there were among those with the most damage. I cried Friday night. I stood at the railroad tracks. I mean, we just stood there and we watched the water rise. That's, you know, and you just cry. <laughs> There's nothing else you can do. A few days later, all they could do was clean and wash some of their flood-soaked belongings and get rid of the rest. I got it. I wanted a drink, that's all. I started from the kitchen while they had to take the rug out. There's the rug. It's done for. It was up to my, no, up to about here. Okay. And, uh, Oh gosh, TVs, are, everything's gone. Well, they're doing the best they can. I mean, I, I can't believe that some of the people have gone through what they've gone through. I mean, they didn't know where to turn. It was up to here, the water up to here. Uh, the dressers were ruined, the beds were ruined. We salvaged that bed, that was up. Most of the folks told us they shed a few tears thank their friends and family for helping out, thank to God that no one was seriously hurt or killed in the flood, and then they set out to get their lives back in order. You get Clorox, cleaning supplies, mops, just, you just keep washing, wiping, and everything. And somehow maybe that takes your mind mm -hmm. off how awful mm -hmm. it really is. Mm-hmm. And you figure, well, tomorrow's another day. The floodwaters have moved on now. But in their wake, they affected thousands of people in southwestern Pennsylvania and West Virginia. But as you heard many of them say, they've been down this road before with major floods of the past. So what made this one so different? Well, for one thing, it was a whole new generation actually experiencing a flood. After all, they'd only heard their parents and grandparents talk about the big one. It was rare they even saw pictures or video of the flood back around Easter time of 1936. Ask anyone in western Pennsylvania old enough to remember. They'll tell you stories about how downtown Pittsburgh streets turned into canals, and it was water up to the ceiling for most people living or working along main streets in all of the small towns up and down the three rivers. You'll also hear recollections about the other one in 72. Agnes, they called it, when a hurricane left its remnants on this region. You don't see many shots of Agnes either, except this home video shot just a few blocks from here and sent to us by a KDKA viewer. And technology is another reason why the flood of 96 was so different. People saw the disaster as it happened, and they won't soon forget the pictures beamed live into their homes. And if there's one final image that people will remember from the flood of 96, it's that huge wind symphony barge. The last we showed you, it was teetering on the edge of the Allegheny Wharf, just a few hundred yards up the river. It looks unreal. You don't realize how much damage that water can do. Oh, my. Right after the floodwaters receded, there it was, the point counterpoint, tilted on the edge of the Allegheny Wharf. You know there's a flood, but until you see it, you don't believe it. Disbelief was the common reaction as people came to get a better look at the barge and the cars and trucks smashed underneath. The cars that were not trapped or swept away were a couple hundred yards down the wharf under giant slabs of ice. A friend of ours' car is down here, first time he drove it to work, and 
it's buried under all this ice and snow. Cars, they're expendable, just as long as nobody got killed or no, nobody got hurt in it. The Sunday after the flood turned out to be a sunny and bright day. A great day for spectators and a busy day for Pittsburgh police who were trying to keep traffic moving on Fort Duquesne Boulevard. By Monday morning, the business crowd added to the crush of barge watchers lining up along the railing. Some came to preserve a few memories. And I went uh, to come by here and I said, wow, i got to get a camera. I went and got a portable one. Oh, look at that. Some wanted a keepsake for their children. My kids, and they, they never seen anything like this. And I figured it would be something for them to see. Some pictures to take to say that they survived the flood of 96. <laughs> and then there were those with a personal stake, like the Point Counterpoint's owner. And it may be that we'll have to bring in a crane for each end and just nestle her in. She's been to Ireland, she's been to Dublin, she's been all over the world. And now here she was, the world traveler stuck on the Allegheny Wharf in Pittsburgh. 1,600 tons and worth millions. And so it went for days. Workers finally cleared the wharf. And city leaders approved a plan they'd considered in the past to keep cars off for good and turn the Allegheny Wharf into a park. As for the Wind Symphony Barge, her salvation arrived a week later. Experts had spent the time figuring out what might work and what might not. Exactly. It might just it might drag it in with the current. It might just drag it down. Robert. And as the crews worked to get everything in place and lined up just right, this final crowd gathered to watch what would be the last rescue of the flood of '96. Thank <laughs> you.